Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing in Minnetonka. We're in the tour van testing out some new drivers for 2021, the Shrixon ZX-5 and ZX-7. Uh, Thomas Shrixon has been really gaining popularity uh, with their Metal Woods in particular, both on tour and with amateurs. I think, you know, you talk about Hideki Matsuyama, you talk about uh, defending Open champion Shane Lowry, both playing Shrixon drivers, and uh, now the ZX-5 and ZX-7. Uh, I know you know there's a lot going on with this driver, but I want to get first get your impression on you know maybe Strixon Metalwoods in particular, what you've seen out of these, just by you know your first impressions, and then uh, we'll kind of get into maybe some of the tech stuff. Yeah, Strixons really bring it. They're bringing the competition to all these other manufacturers, which is great. Competition is great because it produces a even better product out of all the pro mm -hmm. all, all the different companies there too. So one thing I kind of noticed the difference between the ZX7 and ZX5 is. The ZX-7 looks like it's a slightly smaller footprint. Now mm -hmm. they both kind of seem like that tour inspiring look, kind of that pear shaped look, um, very, very clean looking down at, so nothing fancy with regards to triangular shapes or anything like that. Definitely know the ZX-5 is got a little more weight in the, in the back mm -hmm. where the ZX-7's got the weight pushed a little bit. Plus you've got the adjustability with the ZX-7 from the heel to the toe there as well. Right. So, so we'll put that to the test. Uh, we are gonna hit some shots with maybe that you have your weight in the heel, have weight in the toe during our test. But we should mention right away the rebound frame, which is uh, you know, what Strixon did to really uh, improve the energy transfer at impact. So you know, essentially with most drivers, you, know, you get a flexible club face and then kind of the material behind that is more rigid, right? Well, what Strixon did was they added a flexible zone in between uh, there. So you kind of got a flexible face, then in sort of a rigid zone, then another flexible area, and then kind of the internal rib structure behind that. So, that kind of combination is really what Shrixon believes is driving more energy at impact. So um, we'll put that to the test today, but I, that's, I love the ingenuity here that Shrixon has put together in these drivers. Yeah, the rebound frame, it definitely increases ball speed on middle hits, yeah. but also those off-center hits as well. It retains the ball speed, which is very, very important for a driver, for players that don't always hit it in the mm -hmm. middle of the, of the club there too. So retains ball speed, but also produces higher ball speed across mm -hmm. the face, which is important. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, these things will be available for pre-order January 6th, and then they'll be in second swing stores January 15th. So those golfers that may be looking for a uh, upgrade to their driver, those are the dates to watch for the Shrixon ZX-5 and ZX-7. And of course, if you are looking to upgrade your driver, um, be sure to bring in your old one to trade in and take advantage of the second swing value guide and the highest trade in values in the industry. So, uh, and then of course, one more reminder as well, if you enjoy this video, enjoy our reviews of new products, uh, subscribe to the Second Swing Golf YouTube channel. Uh, of course, we got all these reviews on the new products for 2021. It's kind of an exciting time for us. So be sure to check those out as well. And again, we appreciate you watching the videos and leaving comments as well. So Thomas, before we hit, just give me a quick rundown of you know the format of the test, uh, the specs, the shaft, etc. Yeah, so we're gonna hit with the ZX-5. We're gonna hit with the ZX-7, heavyweight in the toe. ZX-7, heavyweight in the heel. You can hit five shots with each driver with the hazardous smoke. Golf Shaft is one of the stock offerings that Srexon's offering with the ZX drivers here too. And we always have that silver dot facing up with, on the Titus Pro Go Golf Ball. This should be a great test, Thomas. So I'm very excited for it. I'm excited to watch hit some drivers, hit some bombs. So let's get after it. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, that is the Srexon ZX-5 in your hand. Um, you'll notice the eight gram weight kind of towards the back on the sole there. Um, now that club head is built with a kind of low and deep center of gravity as it is, and then they kind of just put that eight grams in the back there to sort of bring it back further, and they actually do allow you to adjust that. They provide different weights, you know, four, six, eight, that's already in there, and then 10 and 12. So, you know, you can adjust swing weight as well. For this, we'll do eight gram, but that is an option that comes with this driver as well. Uh, but I think the idea with this club, being that that weight's in the back like that, forgiveness, high launch, that type of thing. Yeah, speaking on that swing weight adjustment, every two gram change is one swing weight point, okay. essentially. So if you're going to add two more grams of, say, go from the eight to the, tw to the 10, now it'll be one more swing weight yeah. point heavier the golf club would be. Okay, so now looking down at that club, Thomas, um, you know, Shrixon coming along very quickly with Metal Woods, uh, last few generations of their kind of releases, and ZX-5 looks pretty darn good at address, I would say. Uh, and I know you're, you're used to kind of the you know, low spin, uh, more compact shape, but I feel like in terms of the high MOI drivers out there, 
This one is a little bit more compact comparatively. Yeah, I put the two of them down against each other, the ZX-5 and the ZX-7. What surprised me is they look fairly similar looking down at both same pear shape, so that kind of that mm -hmm. tour inspired kind of confidence there. ZX-5 is a little bit larger footprint, is when I kind of noticed. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the only thing that could really tell uh, between the two of them. So yeah, it definitely doesn't look like it's, it's not, uh, not as triangular as some other models may be. Yeah. Um, definitely you notice there's an effort to put the weight more in the back, but it's not it's not a large footprint. Okay, yeah. yep. interesting. Well, uh, let's get to the testing here. I'm excited about these Shrixon drivers because again, the, the Shrixon woods are gaining popularity pretty quickly. They sure are. Let's do it. Of straight ball flights with the ZX5 driver uh, from that. Now, I think maybe once or twice left the face a tad open, yep. but other than that, uh, I mean, the dispersion, you got a couple right on top of the center line. You had the one that did not curve at all. Uh, what was it? You know, this your second shot there. So, I mean, what do you think? I mean, you got five shots. I, I thought the ball flights were very straight. What'd you think? Yeah, very straight. You mentioned they had that one there that had zero feet of curve, mm -hmm. but I also had two others that had, I think, 10 and 12 feet of curve on them as well. So very, very limited curve. Mm -hmm. Did leave a couple face a little bit more open. Now this isn't the most draw bias club that I've ever hit. So right. it is more looking down at it, a little cleaner, more kind of that pear shaped look. So I'm not expecting this club to be really easy to turn over. Yeah. That's where maybe the ZX-7, you put that weight in the heel, or you could always up, make this club a little more upright and yeah. increase the loft on it there as well with the ZX-5. But it's designed to go straight. Yeah. I'd say designed to go straight, very forgiving. I think the numbers over, overall were very, very good from what we saw with those five shots. Yeah, and I think, no, I'm used to, you know, for you, and I've seen you hit enough drivers where, you know, your height is usually hovering right around 100 feet to 110 feet. Now this was launching a little bit higher yep. than I'm used to seeing in that, I mean, that's what this driver, that's what Strixon says is all about, right? You're gonna hit the ball straight, you're gonna hit it with high launch, and it's gonna be forgiving. And so uh, I think those five shots indicated all of those to be true. And I mean, especially again, we got, you know, your slight little 12 foot to the left curve here. You got one that's absolutely dead straight here. You got one that's barely moving right just a little bit here, and then maybe a couple here with your face angle over a degree open. But other than that, I mean, that's pretty good, pretty good results for the ZX-5. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. You look at the dispersion pad, there's only five shots out there. But you can see, well, if you look with regards to the, the numbers, at the most, it's about 20 yards to the right. Mm -hmm. That's still going to be in the right side of the fairway. Yeah. Many on the golf course you play I, right, I don't right. play, I don't play too many golf courses where, you know, being 15 yards right of center, you're going to be out of out of the fairway. Right. Um, but it definitely depends on the course you play there right. too. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're playing, you know, a U.S. Open type style <laughs> course where, you know, under par is going to be winning a, a major tournament. Then yep. you might be in the rough there. But uh, most courses, that's going to be in the fairway. That's five fairways that you just hit with that driver. So yeah, I'd say the height was the, the big piece there. What was the average height? I noticed there was quite a few of them in. Uh, here we go. 131 feet in the air. Yep. So you've mentioned, we always mention in the past, I like to hit about 100, 110 feet in the air. This one definitely with the weight in the back, for sure yeah. it's forgiving and launch the ball a little on the, on the higher right. side. And that's what yeah. we should, I mean, we should know. And a lot of golfers, you know, maybe don't get the ball high enough in the air off the tee or want that extra boost of, you know, getting the ball lifted into the air and improve the carry distance. That's where the ZX-5 can be, you know, a big benefit. And then comparatively, as we move into the ZX-7, we should, you know, see with a kind of more forward center of gravity, maybe a lower, little bit lower, more penetrating launch and ball flight with that one. Yeah. Well, let's start out with the ZX-7 with the weight and the heavier weight in the toe. Okay. We've got the four and eight grams yep. with that one, and then we'll try it within the heel as well and see Perfect. if I'm able to straighten out my shots by the end. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> High ball speed, but I feel like I missed hit that. Oh, 
Might be a little lower. Yep, well, Thomas, five shots now with the ZX7, the uh, eight gram weight in the toe. So that would mean a four gram weight in the heel. Um, so that is, I mean, in a way, a tiny bit of a fade bias um, by putting more weight in the toe there. I mean, it's, it's, I mean I, you, it's minimal, a four yep. gram difference there. Uh, but I think, you know, looking at the numbers, we did see lower uh, height, I believe, uh, just a minimal difference there, about eh, 13 feet. So you're launching it a little bit lower and the height's a little bit um, lower. Spin was very, very similar uh, between the two so far. And then that could be uh, partly that, you know, you have a bit of a fade bias, generally a fade mm -hmm. more spin, right? So that could be part of it as well. But um, what did you think of, I guess, all the, what do you think of all these numbers? And of course, what did it feel like, look like, et cetera? Yeah, I want to touch on that, that spin and that, and that fade bias. If you take a look on the, on the right side, with the exception of the last shot that's flashing there, you'll notice how those four mm -hmm. yellow dots to the, uh, to the right there are all kind of favoring over to, to the right side. This last one was more me getting that club face kind of close to my, to my path, which yeah. forced the ball to kind of curve a little bit there. Then you can touch on the forgiveness a little bit too with the ZX5. You can see that circle was a little bit smaller. Yeah. The ZX7 was kind of a little bit larger. Yeah. With the exception of that outlier to the left, was just kind of leading just a little bit all the way to the, to the right side there as well. Usually when the ball curves to the right, it's going to spin a little bit more as well. Yeah. And then usually it might fly a little bit higher as well. So that last shot that I hit, if you click on that one on the far left there, we'll notice the height was right at 100 feet in the air. Yep. And everything else was kind of around about that one, 120 mark, 120 yeah. to one kind of, yeah, with the face being a little, little bit more open. Mm -hmm. But with the ZX-5, you could see how it was pretty consistent every single time around about that 130 to 140 yeah. mark. I mean, you're talking, well too. yeah, I mean, 130 to 140 is pretty much the height for all of these yep. um, with the ZX-5. And then I think we should also mention, too, you had one in there, I believe it was this one here, where it kind of had a weird finish to it. You didn't feel like you hit it very good. And the numbers turned out pretty solid still, which shows yeah. some forgiveness there. And I mean, that's, you know, that's drivers nowadays. Uh, the new stuff that you can upgrade to nowadays, if you miss the center of the face, uh, you can still get away with it and perhaps even put up numbers very similar to what you, know, you would in the center of the face, which is how these manufacturers are improving things. And Shrixon is, is no different here. Yeah, that one actually really surprised me because I, I, it, it didn't feel very good. You can see I was off balance at the end of oh, my yeah. swing there. Uh, kind of give my kind of one hander finish yeah. there, but this they got the, away with it. So yeah, this is the number here. I mean, your the spin was fine in 2,500. You, you, yeah. Your height was 119. So I mean, there was definitely something that didn't quite sound right or look right, but it it turned out okay, which is which is important. A, a That's good what sign you want to get for sure. Yeah. But yeah. now we can try that weight in the heel, see how much things change, uh, if at all. Okay. With these numbers. Sounds good. That was a little miss hit. All right. Yeah. If that's a miss, good miss hit. One, yeah. one feet of curve on that one to the left. Yeah. So Thomas, I mean, I think the I would say the heel setting probably the right one for you, based on that. Uh, I mean, we look at you kind of miss hit this last one here at 285 carry, and that was by far I think your lowest carry distance. I mean, the rest of them are you know 289 and then the rest are 290 plus and i yep. know you're really chasing that 290 carry number so it's good to see you know you get that mark and good to see shrixon deliver that for you i think the important piece to note here is with the weight and the heel to make it slightly more draw bias that those misses you can see those three that are just on the on the right side mm -hmm. kind of about probably 13 14 yards right of center you can see with the other clubs that other settings that i hit you'll notice there's some more dots that have pushed more yep. to the right so you can kind of see how that dispersion pattern just kind of got a little bit, a little bit tighter mm -hmm. there between the two of them. On average, it was it was straighter on, right. on average, which is kind of important. And I think the curve, if we look at the average curve on the the shots with them, you can see there that yeah, you can see it was nine feet of curve to the left. Yeah. The other two were just kind of a little bit out to the kind of the, the right side. Mm -hmm. So clearly, kind of that stood out to me for sure. Well, and one thing to note as well, so you can see over here on the map that your farthest shots to the right were 
what we're talking, I'm just trying to look at the, the little the scale here by what 12, 12 yards 12 probably? or 13 12 yeah. yards to the right um you know you look at the other clubs they're you know out there close to 20 yards yep. the face angle on average is the same with the toe and the heel huh um and so you know you look at that and you think i mean and of course there's more involved right you talk about face to path you talk yep. about the swing and all that but well if you look at the face to path and if you look at my 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 if you take a look here at my club path my face to pad. Yeah, it's all so similar, and right? They're, they're, you know what? You're talking 0.01 right. difference between them. But just by having that little extra weight in, in, the, in the heel, this is really going to just exactly showing how center of gravity plays a huge role mm -hmm. in, in the club there as well. So, yeah, that's, that's really kind of interesting. My only other query would be, you know, where I hit it on the club face. Yeah. If I was maybe catching it yeah. ever so slightly on the toe mm -hmm. side. But I didn't make any adjustment settings, so the only thing I changed was the, the weight. Right. Um, one thing I did notice also with the, the weight change was it just seemed a little louder. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I, you know, it just seemed kind of like it was a little bit, little bit louder with the weight in the heel versus the toe. Kind of interesting. Yeah. I did notice that notice. as well. I, don't, I mean, it's not a huge deal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know, I guess it, that depends on the golfer. A lot of people like the louder sound. Some people don't. And yeah. I think I, I would say most golfers are probably in the category where it doesn't really matter to them as long as the golf club performs which is, I, I would say the ZX-7, certainly in the heel setting for you, performed really well. I mean, all yeah. these shots are within 10-ish yards of the center, which, and that means five fairways you just hit. And three of them carried 290 or more. One of them was 289, and then your miss hit was 285 carry. Yeah. And all of them, of course, went 310 plus total. So that is five very good shots with the ZX-7. Yeah, I was, I was, I was impressed. The nice thing with the ZX-7 is you've got the adjustable weights in the, in the back so you can move the center of gravity around. Mm -hmm. One thing to keep in mind also with ZX-5 and ZX-7 is you've got the hosel adjustments that yep. you can kind of change around there as well. What I did with all these is I put this down to 9 degrees because that's usually what we test all the different models yep. with when we initially test them. So I had moved this slightly down to 9 degrees as we're testing both the ZX-5 and ZX-7. But you can definitely, so this is a 9 degree, 9 and a half degree head. You can put the loft up, you can put the loft down, mm -hmm. and then you also have like a, a flat setting as well with the, the Strixon models as okay. well there too. So you've got adjustability both with the ZX-5 and ZX-7. The ZX-7 just expands a little bit further with the center of gravity. Yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah. Well, Thomas, you've got the data up here. Uh, well, I'm gonna have you maybe break it down just a little bit further, see what else we can find out. But I think for sure, I mean, these are good numbers so far. Yeah, these are great numbers. I, these. Uh, Strixon always impressed me every year with their, their drivers coming out. You don't really think too much about Strixon. You can start thinking more and more and more. You include them in the, include them in the, uh, the club fitting experience for sure because they're, yeah. they're performing well now. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, Drew, let's take a little bit closer look at the numbers and comparing the, well, essentially the ZX-5 and the ZX-7 with the heavy weight in the toe and the heavy weight in the heel. So you can see club speed, we're talking separated by one mile an hour difference between the, between the three of them. Interesting, when I had the weight in the toe, I was swinging that about half a mile an hour faster than in the heel. Uh, and the ball speed was also the highest with that particular setting there as well. It was kind of interesting to see that the ZX-7 in the heel, that was basically one mile an hour less with regards to ball speed. We take a look over here on the right, just had a little bit less spin, and also the carry distance and total distance was a little bit higher. So that just kind of shows the importance mm -hmm. of kind of launch and spin and how right. they, they influence the, the, the distance the ball is, is going there, even if the ball speed maybe isn't quite as high. So we know, for me, I'm in that 2,000 to 2,400 kind of area, with probably 1,800 to 2,400 mm -hmm. is, my, is my optimal spin when I'm hitting clubs. You can see when I hit these other two options, you know, the spin was just a little higher. And I was just sacrificing just kind of a little bit of distance yeah. there as well. But I wasn't really sacrificing the carry distance. You can see the carry distance with all of them pretty pretty similar. You can see when you've got the weight in the heel, it carried, rolled out about 312. Yep. The ZX-5 was rolling it out about 306, 307 there as well. So kind of interesting when you take a look at those, those differences there. Um, launch angle, kind of interesting when I had the weight in the toe, the launch a little bit lower than the other as well. Um, that's kind of interesting also because, you know, I had a few that kind of missed out to the right side as well. Um, the face angle, as you mentioned, there's, there's kind of really, really interesting numbers between the two, the, yeah. the heel and the toe. You can see how my club path and my face angle and my face to path is basically identical mm -hmm. when, we're, when we're hitting the, both those two there. 
but uh, you notice the curve difference. You notice the curve difference with the weight in the heel yeah. to the left to the toe just a little bit to the right. Now we're talking feet, we're talking about this 16 feet difference. It's, it's important. I mean, it is. for players that struggle with a, a bit of a slice or a little bit more, maybe they overhook it a little bit just by moving that four gram, four, four and eight gram weight around, it can yeah. make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that was the big piece that to take away from this is, you know, a four gram difference doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, it, it really doesn't. But you, uh, you, you can take it away from this that, that you know, you're, look at your dispersion on the map there. You can, I think I know which circle I would want, right? Yep. And, or I guess oval. You want the purple oval there. And that's the difference between, uh, you know, four grams difference between the purple one and the kind of the yellow circle there. So, um, and it's not going to be that, I mean, again, the weight in the heel is not going to be the same, you know, the best preference for everybody. But for you in particular, that seems to be the one. And it was just simply moving these weights around a little bit. So that's a good feature by Shrixon to have in the club. And I mean, I know adjustability is the popular thing to put into drivers nowadays, but uh, this is a really nice one because it's very easy to do. I mean, it's just swapping two weights around and that can make that much of a difference. Yeah, just that little difference, just pick me up just a little bit more distance. And as you can kind of see it here on the dispersion pattern, I switched this here to carry distance. You talked about how I had those four shots that were kind of 289 to 293 essentially. Mm -hmm. You can see those, those four circles right there yeah. with regards to kind of carry distance. My best shot, best carry distance was actually with the um, the, the Z, ZX7 with weight in the toll there is the best shot of the day, but you can see consistently just a little bit more kind of carry distance with, with these shots here mm -hmm. going just a little bit further. And then you can kind of see the ZX5, so touching on dispersion, forgiveness. Yeah. I mean, circle was the smallest, can't complain with that, with that pattern there with regards to hitting fairways, so that was definitely the smallest circle out of, out of yeah. the five there as well. And one thing to note too, uh, so I mean with the adjustable hosel you did you know, just because most of these driver tests we like to have it, you know, at your standard loft of nine degrees, the one you play, and the standard loft on these heads that we have here is nine and a half, so you did move them down to nine degrees, which did open the club face slightly, yep. so that maybe has created a bit of that um, kind of trend of the club face a little bit open for your tee shots today, but. Yeah, um, I mentioned earlier in the video with the ZX5 especially, I was like, I was a little surprised that it was maybe to sneak in out to the kind of the, yeah. the right side there too. So for sure, the the face angle by turning that loft down to nine yeah. might have just influenced that just a little bit there as well. Not like it was slicing way out of the, right. but it wasn't. You know, some some models where I've hit the more forgiving model essentially is made me a little easier to draw or hit a little bit straighter. We just kind of noticed that it was just pushing a little yeah. bit to the to the right side there as well. You can see with the ZX5. Um, you can see uh, face angle with all three of them. I was just kind of leaving a little bit, a little bit yeah. open there as well. Now, if you're fitting yourself for this driver, that's not the setting you would probably choose. Get, given what I know about you and what you prefer as your ball flight, you like to hit the more of a draw if you can with the driver. Yep. So I'm sure you would go a different direction um, with you know what you would use in the adjustable the hosel anyway. But just one thing to note then that's for these numbers in this test in particular. That's um, how some of these numbers came about. But I mean. I, Thomas, the Strixon ZX drivers, I mean, I, I'm very impressed with them. And I think, you know, they look really nice too. I mean, I'm holding it right now and it's got that modern, but like it's not too, it's not too, you know, abrasive or anything like that. It's very easy to look at, very clean. Uh, and I mean, it performs really well given the test we, we put together today. Yeah, it performed really well. One thing I noticed, the ball speed was very, very high still, even on those off center hits. So yeah. forgiveness was there, which is very, very important to note. I think Strixon, they're catching up. They're, they're, you know, there's a lot of OEMs right now that are pushing that, that forgiveness level with their drivers and definitely don't discount Strixon because their ZX5 and ZX7 is a great driver option. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that rebound frame inside this club head clearly is, is, a, is a winner for Strixon with these drivers. So uh, golfers, if you're interested in a Strixon ZX5 or ZX7 driver, uh, you know, Second Swing is the place to go. They'll be available for uh, you know, pre-order and then also available in stores coming in January 2021. Uh, and again, from these tests, they're going to be winners. So they want to get one in your bag. You'll be able to hit the ball a little bit further, uh, depending on which uh, club head you're looking at. You know, maybe higher launch and forgiveness with the ZX5, or maybe a little bit lower launch. But then, of course, the adjustability with your trajectory with the ZX7, uh, with those weights on the sole. So, uh, Thomas, thank you for hitting the shots, providing the feedback today. Um, this was a great test.